It's not uncommon for me to um, be laying in bed at night, uh, the night before a, a more complicated operation, and um, I'll have all of these images kind of rolling around in my head thinking about how I'm going to be uh, approaching the tumor or how I may or may not be able to see well or visualize the anatomy that I need to visualize in order to safely uh, get a tumor out like this. And um, this has helped me sleep at night. Three years ago, we started looking into buying the 3D printer for really just use in clinical engineering, and we found that we could fairly quickly get our money back just in reproducing parts that we either couldn't buy or making custom parts that would help medical equipment function better. This is the original part that uh, we were trying to solve. When this piece comes off this uh, patient support arm, you could not buy the part anywhere. The manufacturer won't sell it. Um, and these arms were over $500 a piece. Um, so came up with a design, pretty much made you know, our own clamp that works even better than the original design. And we were all able to print it out for you know, pennies on the dollar. There are many ways that 3D printing is used in medicine nowadays. So I use it to educate them about difficult to identify and localize tumors. So I use it for patients that have uh, small brain tumors that otherwise might be really hard to figure out uh, based on 2D imaging um, where it is. So this is a patient that actually has two brain metastases. This is the brain and the way we made it was that uh, we could actually remove one of the tumors which ultimately was how the patient was treated. She had surgery on this one and there's a second brain metastases that you can see um, probably only by looking at sort of on the inside right there, the little tiny dot. So we're able to get these things printed in three dimensions uh, so that patients can actually see how close it is to critical structures. It's really magical for me to have a model like this. And this up here, this yellow thing, this is your tumor. And these are your blood vessels and this is how they're, how they're traveling around. You're operating one millimeter at a time hoping that um, that you really are where you think you are and that the anatomy really is what you think it is. So again, um, uh, I have always spent a lot of time studying the CAT scans and um, that still hasn't changed. Uh, but this really does help bring to life uh, the understanding of the relationship of the tumors to different vessels and different vital structures that can help make the operation shorter, faster, and a little less anxiety provoking. We've uh, produced a lot of parts in-house um, for medical equipment accessories or the pre-surgical planning that we've priced out and we can do it for about 10% of what it would cost us to have an outside company produce the same parts. So we've already saved tens of thousands of dollars just over the last year. The feedback I've had from patients has been amazing. I mean, they're bringing it to their families and their consults at other hospitals saying, why don't you do this? Even I'm surprised at what we can do. I really can't wait to see what the future holds as far as uh, bigger, better modeling, um, more pre-surgical planning, and hopefully having a positive impact on patients. This is a, an area where uh, Bay State really is on the, the cutting edge of this biomedical technology. For a medical center of our size, we have a, a great deal of uh, esprit de corps if you will, doing, doing this. We're, we're way ahead of the curve.